Awo Shalom Rastafari. We're going to talk about the Wazema. Wazema is an Amharic word that means ease, the ease. So if there's a, for example, Friday is the Wazema of the Senbet or the Shabbat, the Sabbath day. And for the whole Sha'ina Araba, there is a a tradition, certain tradition, which from our study and investigation of it is useful to know. Although this year, this time, many of us have not been able to practice it or keep it in the right and the righteous way, we're learning about it. And the best thing we can do is to learn and to study and show ourselves approved and when we get the opportunity to do. So we're going to touch on the Tikkun Ho Sha'ina Araba or the Wazema or the ease of the Hosha'ina. Now, many speak of a custom, a custom of reading the Torah, of reading the Orit, reading the five books of Musa or Moshe, Mashu, Moses, on the night of the Hosha'ina Araba out of which has, has grown or developed a, a custom of reading or Zedagim or Devarim, Deuteronomy, or the Tehillim or Mesmur Dawit, the Psalms of David, and passages of the Zohar reciting the Kabbalistic prayers. Now for us, as the once lost but now found data is Arayel, we have our own Ethiopic Kabbalistic um, and Talmudic tradition and thanks be to the King of Kings and his Christ we have many of these works which are available for us and to us in the English language the common English language that many of us uh, speak and know now this particular book we've touched on it and there's much that we have to touch on because it has a lot of reference key reference sources and materials in it. And this is the Queen of Sheba and her only son, Minulik. And this is a particular version that the Line of Jews Society has published. So for us, uh, uh, Wazema tradition or practice can be as well reading of the Torah, the Orita Zedagim or Devarim, which is known as Deuteronomy, or the Mesmur Dawit, the Psalms of David, known in the Ibraist, Kwankwa, or the Hebrew as Tehillim, and passages from the Kibra, the Kibra Negest, as well as other documentation. But this is a good place to start, and we're going to be referring to this as part of and one of the main um, entries within the greater work of the Ethiopic um, Talmud or Tim Herit, the Ethiopic teachings based on our Hebrew establishment. Now, moving forward, in Orthodox uh, Jewish and uh, Hebraic circles, namely of the OJs or the other Jews, some men will stay up all night learning and studying Torah. They will stay up all night learning and studying the, the Havarim, especially where brothers would, you know, two by two will, will sit and read and study scripture. This many of us long and desire to do because it's through that fellowship, through iron sharpening iron. But each of us must first begin by taking that personal responsibility and learning the first principles and the basics. And in the annual Sabbaths, the annual Shabbats, such as this particular fall festival season that comprises of the uh, Yom Teruah or the festival of trumpets, the blowing of the shofar, Rosh Hashanah, in other words, as well as the Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, or in gatherings of tabernacles, this is the Hosha'ina Araba. And we're speaking about the Eve, the Wazima, 
what is done as a tradition. This is not commandment, but as a tradition. And we, as lost sheep, as black, so-called black people in the Americas and the Caribbean who were raped from our culture and, and our identity of self, it's very important. It's a necessity. It's a monacity. It's a must and a necessity for us to learn and study and, and to reclaim that which we have lost. And another point is to not blame the OJs or the other Jews. And the reason why I say this is that if you study Torah and study the Nabiyat, the prophets and, and the scriptures, you will find that our ancestors and many of us to this very day, nothing stops us from learning of our lost sound culture or of doing the will of our God and Father. Nothing prevents us from this but ourselves. So one has to be saved from themselves. So when we speak about being born again, it's important that one understands exactly the personal and the individual responsibility. The responsibility. This is the first step of true discipleship beyond just submitting an application, even though that's a, that's a good willingness, a good step. These studies, both of the Torah portions and the portions and the, the holy days, and this is why we, we're seeking to emphasize this point because in our, um, in our guide or the Sabbath house readings, as um, ones will no doubt if they've downloaded it, will be able to consult with beginning on page 8, is where additional portions for the holy days are found. And there, but the holy days are calculated according to the so-called lunar the lunar heavenly calendar cycle. And this also requires us to learn about the heavens, not out of some sense of worshiping the host of heavens, because we recognize that you don't worship the, the hour hand and the minute hand on the clock. You don't worship the numbers on the clock. You use the clock basically to tell time. The same thing is with the heavens for signs and seasons and days and years. So on the eve of the Hosha'ina Araba, today is the Hosha'ina Araba, and the evening before, that was the eve. So this is why we made a statement right here that many of us have not been able to do it because we're still in the process of learning it. And this is why we have taken the responsibility and taken the initiative to study these things and to present them for other brothers and sisters. And then hopefully when we fellowship, y'all willing, we'll be able to truly um, break bread and to pray together and to really build on the foundation of the King of Kings and his Christ and be overcomers together. Now, the Tikkun, the Jews call it the Tikkun Rosh the Tikkun uh, Hoshana Raba, the Tikkun Hoshana Raba, we will call it the Wazema uh, of the Hoshana Raba. The Targum, English, is the Eve of the Hoshana Raba. Now, the Sephardim, the Sephardic Jews, they have a tradition as well of staying up the entire night on the Eve of this particular day. So many of the Sephardim have stayed up all night previous to today, previous to the Hosha'ina Rabbah. Now throughout the night in, the, in their synagogues, the Mukurab Bacho, um, Torah or read learning, it takes place as well as praying the Salachot prayers. The entire book of Deuteronomy, or Rit Zedagim, is read, as well as the Devar Torah. The Devar Torah is a review and a, is, is like speaking, the speaking of matters of what is in the portions that have been read 
or that have been studied or chanted. So it's, like, it's as a review. So reading and reviewing in a collective sense and also in a two-by-two two sense. This is why the next step of discipleship is to, to peer up and to partner up in discipleship, whether it's two brethren, two sisteren, whether it's a husband and a wife, to peer up in these studies and to peer up in the Torah portion readings as well as the, the additional portions which are read for the holidays and the holy days. It's important, especially if the man and the woman, husband and the wife, uh, have children or expect to have children because it's a, it's a main part of this covenant of the Holy Kal Kidan to teach our children. Therefore, we as the adults must learn because what we've lost in this 400 plus years, what we've lost is our own traditions, is our identity, our culture, our traditions, and many even our very minds, so our souls. So he restores to us our souls. Now, the reason that the Sephardim or the Sephardic Jews, the reason uh, for this is that they do this is because this book, the Orit Zedagim, Repetition of the Law, is considered in itself by some, or even by many, and ourselves included, as a review. So when you are reading Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy, Bamarinya, and from the is, is known as the Orit, or the Torah, Ze of Dagim, of the repetition. So it's a review of the entire Torah, the entire Orit. But also, there's additional reason, and the, the additional reason is because in the Torah portion cycle, in the cycle, Torah portion cycle, which we have within our um, Torah portion study guide or the Sabbath house reading, yeah, Samantawi Senbet Orita Nebab, the book of Deuteronomy, Orit Zedagim, or the Ibrahist in the Hebrew, Devarim, is about to be completed, is about to be completed the following days, on the following days on the Simchat Torah, the Simchat Torah. And we hope and pray that we're able to present a presentation on the Simchat Torah or the joy of the Torah, because this is where the end of the book of Deuteronomy is read as well as the beginning of Deuteronomy is read as well. So this is why it's very important for us to, to comprehend um, our calendar, the holy days, the weekly uh, Sabbath, as well as the annual Sabbaths in our lunar solar year and cycle. Now, in the Hasidic communities, which follows, many of them follow the customs of a, a rabbi, um, a rabbi Menachem, Menachem Mendel of uh, Rimanov, Menachem Men, uh, Mendel of Rimanov. There is a public reading. They practice a public reading of the book of Devarim, of the book of Deuteronomy, from a sefer, from a book of the Torah, a book that has been prepared with that particular reading there. This may be followed by a, a, a tish, a tish in honor of the particular festival. Take a note of that, and, and we're going to touch on the tish as well. But just to wrap this part up about the practices on the eve, what is done on the eve, of Hosha and Araba, the entire book of the Psalms or the Tehillim, the Mezmure Dawit, is also read with the Kabbalistic prayers being recited after each of the five sections. That the book of Psalms actually, when properly understood or overstood, is broken into five parts. Now, what we have been able to do 
all thanks and praise to the King of Kings and His Christ. What we have been able to do is to, um, as we're going to present this to you, is we also have, have this available, which also notes the the five main the five main divisions the five main sections or the five books some call the five books did you know the psalms is five books just as the torah is also five books and really the gospels if rightly understood there are five gospels some say that acts of the apostles in a sense, can be included in a similar way to Deuteronomy, Devarim, or Rit Zedagim, as a, a, a summary or a review in that sense. But this is what we have available now, the Mesmora Dawi, and this is the Jubilee edition, which is, has been updated from the first, the, the first printing. We went over the printing and put in more footnotes, annotations, and certain significant details explaining such important things as the meaning of the Selah, what is the meaning of the Selah, and, and what are the five books, what's the significance of the five books, what's the significance of the numbering, what's the significance of the subscriptions as well that are found in the Psalms. Some Bibles take out the subscriptions, but we actually trace them to the very root through the greatest of the Hebrew um, prophets, um, Moshe, Moses, to the wisdom that he was familiar with, the wisdom of the Egypts or of the Egyptians. So this volume we have as well available, and ones can order a copy and it's a parallel Bible in English as well as in Amharic as you can see right here in English as well as in Amharic and also it has the 151st the 151st Psalm of Great King David as well in the Amharic as well as an English translation and important footnotes as well hopefully we'll get to touch on this, the Psalms of David, as you will, if you pay attention, you will see that the Psalms and certain um, books in the Bible have significance, especially with the holy days, and there are certain verses which also have significance, both with the observation of the holy days, as well as with the inner logic of the meaning behind these particular holy days. And we have yet to connect this with the New Testament fully in the sense of Yeshua, HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, when he rode on that, that donkey, that ass, into Jerusalem. And when the people cried, Hoshiana, the Arya, when they cried, Hosanna, in the highest. It's a very, very important um meaning to that and application and also that leads us to the revelation of Rastafari and his imperial majesty also in that same way and that same type riding on that ass or on that donkey as well. And um, that's a word picture. We actually, some of you have probably seen that particular picture of his imperial majesty and this is during... Um, those particular days back in um, the fascist antichrist when they invaded um, Ethiopia, similar to when the Philistines attacked um, David after he was, when he was recently coronated, when David was newly on the throne, the Philistines attacked him within the first, I think, couple of years, similar to what uh, Mussolini and the modern Italian fascists and modern Philistines attempted to do to his imperial majesty and the blameless and holy Ethiopians who became those martyrs dressed in white, those martyrs dressed in that, dressed in the white robes and the robes of righteousness as it's written in 
Revelation where it speaks of the beast and the antichrist and the evildoers making war against that righteous people. Now, the next two sections of the Hoshiana Araba are very important as well. And the next two sections are the five willow branches. There are five willow branches. Then is the prayers for the Moshiach or the prayers for Messiah, for Christ, our black Lord and Savior. First we'll deal with the five willow branches. At the conclusion of a number of what's called the piyutim, the piyutim, which are liturgical poems, or kadasayawi kine, liturgical poems and prose. Five willow branches are beaten on the ground or other surface to symbolize the elimination, to symbolize the elimination of hatiyat, to symbolize the elimination of sin. Now, this is also symbolic as a prayer for rain. This is the rain connection that we pointed to a little bit earlier in this particular series when we said that there's a rain connection. You know, there's the earlier rain and there's the latter rain. There is the first harvest and then there's the latter harvest. So this is the time also of the, the latter rains in a sense. Um, so there's a prayer which is symbolic for rain and for success in agriculture, not for rain like rain rate right then, but for regular, regular and timely rains. And it's interesting because the ancient Egyptians also had these sort of prayers for regular and timely rains, and these rains came from the highlands of Ethiopia, Ethiopia, from upper all the way down to the valley, bringing the rich topsoil as well, and this would be for the success of their agriculture. So the similarities are very, very important. Now, according to the Kabbalah, or the Kabbalah, beating the ground with the five willow branches is said to be done to, quote, sweeten the five severities. To sweeten the five severities. Now, there is no barakat or blessing said. There's no specific blessing that's said for this particular rite or ritual. But there is an Aramaic expression which is sometimes chanted. And this expression is Habit Habit Vela Bariya or Bariyah Bariak or Barik Barik Habit Habit Owe or Vela Barik Barik. And this is what is often chanted. Now, the last part of the Hoshiana Rabba the Hoshiana Araba, and, and just on the willows, just before we go forward from the willows, the Holy Spirit said that we should just take a little more, a little more time on the willows. Because there's a very important and regularly referenced um, psalm, especially amongst us as Rastafari and those of us as, 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 um, as falashes of the West, or as ones would say, um, exiles, or those who are in exile. If you turn your Metaf Kedus, your Bibles, to Psalm 137, and here we want to utilize this right here, uh, 137. 137, there's an interesting psalm, and the psalm mentions. Um, in the English, it mentions this particular um, plant or tree type called the willow. In the English, it reads, By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down, yea, we wept, when we remembered Sion or Zion. We hanged our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. 
For there they that carried us captive required of us a song, and they that wasted us required of us mirth, saying, Sing us one of the songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. If I do not remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. If I prefer not Jerusalem above my chief joy, Remember Abitu, Adonai, the children of Adam, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who art to be destroyed, happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. I and I and I, happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Hmm. Bamarinya in them heart. The Babylon Wenzo Chatege Bazia Tek Emmet in Sion Nemma Basa Benatigize Alek Essen. Be ahaya za fochua laya mesen hak o chachinena sekalin. Yamarakuna bezia ye zamare nak ala fala gubin. Ye wesa dunim. Ye tsionina zamare ya zamrulina alun. Ye egezi ab herna zamare ya beba uda midara indate in zamrale. I Jerusalem hoya dere sashak enye terusan. Balas bisha melase da gororo ye yet abekum. Kadesta ye hulu belai Jerusalem na bala wedid. Abetu be Jerusalem akena ye domina le jocha asibam. Iska mesereto aderesa afersu afersu yalu atin. Anchi werada ye Babylon le joy. Sila tekabel, sila tebek alishina ya miya bek alisha ya tamasa ganano. It anato chishina yuzo, be oleta la ya miya fet efet acho ya tamasa ganano. Now, amen, amen. The willow. Is mentioned in the second verse where it says, Be Ahaya Zafochwa Lai Mesen Ochachinin, our Mesen calls, our Mesen, our Mesen calls, yes, plural, our Mesen calls, uh, Sek Alin, that we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst, in the midst thereof. Now, what's interesting is that. As we just read for the whole Sha'ina Araba, the Wazema, it says that um, in the five willows, there's 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 a piu team, uh, the piu team, which are liturgical uh, poems or Kedase Yawi Kene, and the five uh, Ahaya branches, Korinch Afuch, are beaten to the ground. Or other, or, or, or other surface to do what? To symbolize. To symbolize what? To symbolize the elimination of sin. Now, if beating the ahaya to the ground is to symbolize the elimination of sin, then what would it mean to hang our hearts upon the willows in the midst? 
And it is interesting because it's connected with music. This speaking is speaking of the Beta Israel, of the true ethnic and biblical Israelites. And it demonstrates that the Israelites were in a sort of a captivity. They were far from home. It says, by the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered the Sion. As we weep when we remember or think of the African of Sion, of the King of Kings. But then it goes on to say that we hang our harps upon the willows in the midst thereof. For there they that carried us away captive, those who carried us away captive, required of us, of I and I, a song. They required music. That means that these people must be very musical. They must be soul people. They must be also black people, and they are this lost sheep known as the black people in the Americas and the Caribbean since the whole slave trade, the captivity. Now notice what it says. For there they that carried us away captive, they required a song. They required a song of us. And they that wasted us required of us mirth. They, they, they wanted from us joy and happiness, nice songs. And this is exactly the role that the bywords, who lost their true name and identity, so-called Negroes or black people, you know, saying so-called niggers, this is the way that it is with them. They require a song of music, you know what I'm saying, plantation songs old Negro spiritual songs, um, blues and R&B and jazz and now hip-hop and, and reggae, they require of us a song. So look at the connection with the Masenko, Masenko Chachinin, the Sekelin, Haya Zafot, that hanging our harps upon the willows, and the willows now symbolizing the hatiyat and the beating of the willows, the five willow branches in this particular Hebraic and Judaic tradition symbolizes the elimination of sin. But we hang our harps, notice something, on the willow branches. You understand? And do we give them a song? Well, look, look at the history of niggers in America, Negroes in America. We've been giving them a song from the plantation song the old-time Negro spiritual songs. We've been giving them, what, what, what's the other kind of songs we've been giving them? Um, blues and jazz and, and, and R&B and, and, and reggae and, and, and now hip-hop and any other kind of, we probably left out a couple of kinds of music, but we, we basically have done it all. But what's important is that our experience as lost sheep goes hand in hand, but Madame Demi you know what I'm saying? It, 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 is, it is on the same deraja, on the same level as what is just even overtly clear about this testimony from Psalm 137. It says, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? It's a question. They didn't say that we're not going to sing the Lord's song. It says, how are we? Well, are we going to do it in a jazz way, or in an R&B way, in a reggae way? Are we going to do it in an old-time Negro spiritual way? Are we going to do it in an old-time plantation songs way? Are we going to do it in a new hip-hop way? You know what I'm Do it in a disco way, in a dance hall way, in a classical way? Which way? Are we going to notice that? See, a lot of people read it and would think it's saying that they're not going to do this. They're so righteous. They're going to hold their ground. But it says, really, you can interpret this, how shall we sing? In what particular mode of music? And what's interesting is that only black people in America, the lost sheep, have this wide musical range behind them, even being the creators of this wide range of musicality. And this particular psalm is a testimony. But let's move forward. It says, If I forget thee, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget her cunning. That's interesting. Because the right hand was, you could say, the hand of war. It's like, it's like as a boxer. That's your knockout punch, your right hand. You know, did we lose? But notice the right hand also. On a higher level, it's the yod. 
It's the Yod. It's the Yemen. The Yemen, the Yod. The right hand, which is symbolic of Yah. Yah, or the Yod, the hand of God. Did we lose our right hand? Well, it's kind of obvious. Because if we didn't lose our right hand, we could use it to free ourselves. But obviously, we forgot Jerusalem. We forgot who we were. We forgot Jerusalem. We forgot that Jerusalem is our holy city. And all of this is a part of the woolly lynchism, let's make a slave. You can see the, the undoing of who we were in the let's make a slave. Then it goes on to say, if I do not re remember thee, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth, if I prefer not Jerusalem or Jerusalem above my chiefest joy. Ask yourself. Ask yourself and then ask about the others, do I regard Jerusalem above my chiefest joy? Do we as black people, quote, lost, found, sheep, regard Jerusalem above our chiefest joy? Do we even know where the true new Jerusalem and African and Sion really is? Or are we conformed to the way of the world? And if the world says it's over there, we say it's over there too while it's not over there. Be that as it may, um, I rest my point on that. But moving on to this, remember Abitu, remember Adonai, the children of Edom. Now, this is interesting because Edom was the brother or the Esau, who is the father of the Edomites, or Edom, is the brother of, 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 uh, of Jacob, Yaakov. So they are brothers. But they could be no more different than day and night. It says, in the day of Jerusalem, who said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. Now, some of our Hebrew Israelite um, brothers, they say that the, the Edom and, the, and Esau is the so-called OJs, the other Jews. Well, you know, Esau and Edom... Adam is a Adam was a fornicator. So Adam had different wives, Canaanite wives. You understand? So this is where 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 we get the German, the German and the Polish Jews actually. So as you all call them Adam, we can also say yes, there's some Adam there, but also the Jebusite. Then also with Ishmael. That's why when you look at some of the Arabs and the Palestinians and people in that region and you look at some of the Jews, you say they're the same people because it's, it's part of that same, that same lineage. So really, we need to really understand who's who about this particular matter. But Adam, I think I'll, 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 I'm going to leave that, that. That needs to be done in another, in another context. But it was Adam. So we need to know who was this that said, raise it, raise it, even to the foundation thereof. In other words, destroy it, destroy it. Because if they were doing that then, then they probably are doing the same things even right now. So if we see who's behind the plot against Imperial Ethiopia in this day and time, no doubt we will find Edom saying the same thing that they were saying then, raise it, raise it, in other words, destroy it, demolish it demolish it. Now, these last two verses are very key because this is no PC verses here in Scripture. These last two verses where it says, O daughter of Babylon. Not Babylon. This is not Babylon, but now we're speaking to the daughter of Babylon. O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed. In other words, daughter of Babylon, whose, whose future they do say, what's the future of the stock market? You mean the stock market, Wall Street, where they sold my ancestors, our ancestors, the lost sheep of the Beta Israel, the Falashes of the West? What's the future? O daughter of Babylon, who are to be destroyed. Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. My brothers and sisters, how have they served us? How have they served us? It says, Happy shall he be that rewardeth thee as thou hast served us. What's interesting about this is connected with Revelation where it says, um, He that 
leads into captivity must surely go into captivity. He who kills with a sword must be killed by a sword. So from the divine mind, this is justice. Remember, the connection of this season, the fall festival season, which includes Rosh Hashanah, or Yom Teruah, or Yom Kippur, and Sukkot, or the Feast of Tabernacles, is a judgment time. And this is the last days of the judgment in this season, the whole Shi'ana Rabbah symbolizes that last days, the last days of the judgment. Verse 9, to conclude this particular section, it says, happy shall he be, or blessed shall he be, or in the Hebrew, it's interesting, it uses Asher, Asher Haish, Asher Haish, very interesting, Asher, or you could say Osa. Osa Haish. Osa Asher is the man. Now remember the connection with the kittel or the kittel, the kittel that they wear, you understand, which is actually a, a white pocketless kind of burial type of shroud on high holy days, and even the cantor wears it on this particular day. And this is where you'll find the most powerful, some of the most powerful links to our Coptic Hebrew brother Moses' the wisdom that he was learned in, the wisdom of the Egypts, as we can see right here. And this is a judgment scene. You see the two women behind the happy man, Asher, Haish, who is the judge. Those two women are like symbolic for Judah and Israel, or Israel, the northern tribes in Judah. And Yahweh is always revealing if we would receive it. Look at Ethiopia today. Look at the difference between the northern Ethiopia and southern Ethiopia. Then look at old Israel, and look at the difference between northern Israel, where the Samaritans will come out from there, and then southern Israel, which was Judea, where the Judahites, notice the difference. I was reading something, I'm going to put it in another, in another presentation, but th this is also about a judgment too, and I think maybe it's well worth, it's well worth uh, putting this in, um, introducing this as well since this is something that has to be judged. It's the hypocrisy of the careless Ethiopians. There's an article that was on Tigray, the Tigray Online, and doing some research, Tigray Online. And I want to just give you a little part of this here. Um, they say, uh, how fear, they're talking about the Holy Synod. And I'm going to wrap this up with this because that judgment is also worthy um, they speak about, the main part of it says, it is an undeniable fact, an undeniable fact that up to 1974, this particular um, Ethiopian, careless Ethiopian writer, Dilwenderu Nega, who wrote this particular article, practicing hypocrisy in EOTC would be detrimental to the cohesion of the laity. They sound so smart, don't they? They sound so wise, but they don't get it yet. They don't get what they've done, and they just keep making this judgment actually worse. But here, in this particular part of the article, I saw where it had Rasta and Hila Selassie, and they say right here in this part, it is an undeniable fact that up to 1974, we, speaking of them, so all responded amen or amen when a holy synod sanctioned prayer, and he's not quite correct with this, but he says a holy synod sanctioned prayer called for, quote, God to place under the crushing feet of Hila Selassie all his enemies. And for all these years, they said amen, amen to this. And now this careless one, he goes on to write, 
what a fallacy. And it's interesting because what's a fallacy is that this, this person had misspelled fallacy in the particular article. But the next part says, where in the Bible or EOTC's canon law does it state, quote, opposing Haile Selassie is opposing God? This is what the careless Ethiopian acts. And so as one step into a good judgment time in this new 2012 year that we're about to enter into, I would like to at least give my brothers and sisters and others who are willing to receive the truth um, the answer to that particular question. So notice what this individual says. This individual says that up until it's an undeniable fact, it's an undeniable fact that Ethiopians, especially Christian Ethiopians and members of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tawahedo Church, that up until 1974, they all responded, Amen or Amen. Now, they tried to say this was a synod-sanctioned prayer, but not really. The, synod, the, the Holy Synod of Ethiopia had to recognize what was truth, both in the Bible and in the practice of the Hebrew establishment of the Solomonic dynasty in Ethiopia. Period. But he goes on to say that this prayer called for, quote, God, our God, the true God, Jah, in other words, to place under the crushing feet of Haile Selassie all his enemies. Then this hypocrite goes on to say, what a fallacy, misspelling fallacy. And then they ask, where in the Bible or EOTC canon law does it state opposing Haile Selassie is opposing God, end quote. Now, you know what's so interesting? There's some more to this particular article, but they basically have judged themselves. So here's the word. Here's the word to you about opposing Haile Selassie is as opposing God and that you all prayed this prayer and you all said amen. You all said amen. Did anybody force you to say amen? Did anybody twist your arm to say amen? Wasn't it not the practice to pray for the king or the ruler upon the Solomonic throne of David? Oh, ye careless Ethiopians, what a judgment awaits and what a judgment is coming. So just wait. Just watch and wait. It will be here before you know it. Here's, here's the answer to that. You said we're in the Bible. Exodus chapter 22, verse 28, it says, Thou shalt not revile the gods or the Elohim, nor curse the ruler of thy people. So it's saying that the ruler is likened unto the gods. And this is already a known tradition. It's not saying that the ruler is above God, but the ruler is that one who is the first servant of state and the first one responsible and the one who sits in judgment on the throne of great King David, which is called the throne of Yahweh or Jehovah. We, we read something else where the individual said that, oh, what makes um, his majesty any saintly? You know, this is, I, I don't want to go into this kind of stuff right now, but I just wanted to, I guess, bring that up since we're in a judgment time. You know, we're in a judgment time. But verse 9, getting back to Psalm 137, verse 9 says, Happy shall he be that taketh and dasheth thy little ones against the stones. Now, we can look at that metaphorically or metaphysically, you know, or, but we need to also look at that realistically. Let's go to the next part of this. This 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 is the last part of this particular um um this particular uh whole shot in the Raba the basics the basics and the last part is a prayer there's a prayer for Messiah. The ancients. Offering by Isat by fire. Now, Baruch, Baruch, Baruch. Prayers for the Messiah. It says that the whole Shanot, or to say the whole Sha'enawoch, the whole Sha'enawoch, whole Shanot, they are accompanied by a series of liturgical verses, a series of Kedase or Kedase Yahweh 
um, verses climaxing with a particular verse that you probably have heard before or have heard reference to, and hopefully we'll get to get into that a little bit more. But what's connected with this particular season, the whole Sha'en Rabbah, are prayers for the Messiah. So now imagine in the manifestation and revelation of our black Lord and Savior Jesus Christ when he rode upon that donkey into Jerusalem, his triumphal entry, and the people, the common people, the laity, in other words, were able to receive it. But who opposed it? It was the priests, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Sanhedrin, because they had something to lose, a lot to lose. And I give you this, and I'm seeing that this is a connection with what we just read about the Kievus Ethiopians as well. So when we see um, Zephaniah 2 and 12, it's a very important and accurate, and we should dry our eye for that because why are you going to cry about justice being done? We should cry because justice still is to be done, and there's so many innocents. We should cry for the innocent, not for the guilty. The prayer climaxes with call mevasa mevasa veomer. Call Mevaser, Mevaser the Omer. The voice of the herald, the Kedami, Bamarinya, the forerunner, the Kedami, the herald, El Eliyahu, or Elias, or Elijah, heralds and says, expressing hope for the speedy coming of Moshiach. Hope for the speedy coming of the Messiah. So my brothers and sisters, on that note, once again, Petek Tov, or a good note, a good token, a good verdict um, for you all, since all of our accounts are being looked into at this time. But the best thing to do is to say, as they who witness our black Lord and Savior ride triumphantly into Jerusalem, to say with them in spirit and in truth, Ho Sha'ina Araba, or Ho Sha'ina Be'ariam, Hosanna in the highest, in the most high. Ja, Rasta Farai. Shalom.